hard things in life and make you stronger. People always say that. And I can think of a ton of hard things I've done in my life that I think have made me stronger. Hard things I do now. But I want to talk about something a little bit deeper than that. And something that's actually very, very related to mathematics. It's, so, so when I was in grad school, I had a friend. I won't mention his name, but I, I, might, I might try to call him tonight. I lost his phone number. He was my best friend at grad school. Uh, he was Mexican, I remember, and I'm also Hispanic, so you know, we bonded really quick. Really good guy, really good person. And he basically convinced me to do something really, really hard. One of the hardest things I've done in my life. It was a very hard experience, I share it in this video, and it made me very, very strong. Before I do though, I just want to I want to paint a picture here. So there's there's a movie. It's a math movie. It's called Stand and Deliver, and it takes place in California. It's about this uh, Bolivian American Bolivian Bolivian American math professor named Jaime Escalante, who was teaching an AP Calc course to kids in, like you know the ghettos or whatever. And the kids all ace the test. Everyone thinks the kids cheated. So like they have to retake the test. It's a true story. It's a true story. So Jaime Escalante is like this legendary teacher. And by the way, Jaime Escalante is inspired by a man named Louis Leitbold, who wrote a very famous calculus book. Anyways, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent, but stand and deliver, Jaime Escalante, legendary calculus teacher. My friend was the Mexican Jaime Escalante. So if you know the movie, stand and deliver. If you don't know the movie, watch it, stand and deliver great movie with uh, Edward James Olmos. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. So, the Mexican Jaime Escalante, right? My friend here. He's awesome. Just awesome. So, I'm in grad school. You know, I hang out with my friend sometimes. He comes over to my apartment sometimes. You know, I've got a kitchen table and one... He brings a chair because I only have one chair in my apartment. You know, sleeping on the floor for a year. Some math people do. So I have some experience at this point. I've taught some Calculus 1 recitations. So I'm not really the teacher, you know, I'm just kind of like a grad, grad student, serves another teacher. So I finally get the opportunity to teach a, a class on my own, to have my own class. And so my friend convinces me to teach this class. And so this class, okay, these, these students, this class, they're, they're good students. So they tell me that these students come from economically challenged backgrounds. So that's what they say. That's the words they use. And so I hear stories, right? I hear stories about, about the classes. There's this guy who was in the military, and he tried to teach this class, and he couldn't handle it. He broke down. After two weeks, he quit. He couldn't teach the class. That, that's the story I'm told. And then I had this friend from California. I remember he used to like chips and salsa. And he was teaching the class too. And he had a breakdown. The story was that there was this girl, and every day she would say, What homework is due tomorrow? What homework is due tomorrow? And every day he would say, What's well, on the syllabus? And one day, it's a true story, one day my friend breaks down. He has a nervous breakdown in the class. He starts yelling at the students. He tells the girl, drop out of college. I mean, he has a complete mental breakdown, this guy. Okay, my poor... And, and, and he just snapped. He could not handle the stress of teaching the class. So the entire class goes and they complain about him. And nothing happens. He apologizes, goes back. You know, everything's fine. But he had a, he had a nervous breakdown. And this is the guy who already had a master's degree from California. Went to a really good school. You know, he's, he's, he has teaching experience, right? So... My friend, my good friend, my best friend, convinces me to teach this class. And I guess I wanted to do it because I had, I had seen my friend teach. You know, I sat in in his class once, and I remember watching him teach, and the whole class was like responding in unison 
people are like, 17, X plus two, like, it's like chorus. It's like the movie Stand and Deliver. That's why I always say he was like the Mexican Jaime Escalante, right? This guy was like, I mean, he was just such a good teacher. This guy was a legend. You know, I, don't, I don't know where he is today. I, I don't know. And so I thought, well, my friend knows what he's talking about, right? This, this guy's a legend. I, I, I want to learn from this guy. He's kind of like my mentor, you know? And so I said, okay, I'm going to do it, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach... I'm going to teach this class. And so the class was hard. It was five days a week, 8 a.m. And I forgot the name of the class. Oh, I do remember it, but I won't mention it. It was basically like a like a pre-calc 2 class. What happened to pre-calc 1 right now? They just threw me into pre-calc 2. I never taught a class on my own. 8 a.m., Monday through Friday. Homework was due every single day. That's not my choice. I felt bad for the students. I had an undergraduate grader. Yeah. I would put the homework in my mailbox and he couldn't get it. I would put it back. And the students would complain about the grader. I remember they would complain about the homework. Oh, why do I lose five points? I mean, I didn't grade it. I'd always blame the grader. Like, sometimes they would threaten the grader. Like, oh, who's, I'm going to find him. I'm gonna, who's the grader? I'm going to find that guy. I want to know who he is. I'm like, I don't know who he is. I had a guy who once threat me in the class. He, uh, he kept talking. And I was like, please, man, you got to please, please keep it down, you know? And he, he would just not stop. And he was, he was a problem all semester. He was actually my favorite student, despite being a problem. That's I'll talk about that in a minute. But... And one day I was like, listen, you really need to keep it down. I'm just, just going to have to ask you to leave if you, if, you, if you can't keep it down, please. And he got up and he got in my face and he says, you would say that to me if we were in the parking lot or something like that, you know. And then he walked out. I'm like, why is he leaving? Then he came back. So, But I wasn't afraid, you know, and it was kind of a memorable moment. I, that's kind of sick. I, I liked, I, I didn't like that he was a disturbance. It was very annoying. You know, you're trying to teach mathematics. And he's talking to people. He's, he's bothering the girl in front of him. I mean, but there was something lovable about him, you know? I don't know. I don't know. There was like a goodness to him, you know? Purity. And so the hardest thing about teaching that class was that people would not stop talking, you know? And, you know, if you're teaching a class and they're talking, you can't yell at the class, right? You have to, you have to do it right. And, and that's not something you learn in school. You can study math for 10 years and be a math genius. But how you deal with people is, is hard. It takes practice. And so I'd always just be like, hey, please keep it down. And, and the, they would stop for a little while, and then they'd start up again. But it was a daily thing, you know, and it, it, never, it never completely went away. It never completely went away. In fact, on the final exam, there was a girl. She was in my class. She was taking the final. And it was in a different room. It was proctored by me and another grad student. And she was looking at another person's test and cheating. And I looked at her and I said, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you looking at her test? Why are you copying? He goes, I'm not copying. What are you, I'm, not, I'm not cheating. She yelled at me. I was like, what do I And the other grad student was like, oh, I'll handle it. I'm like, okay. I, just, so, I don't know what happened to her. I think she got in trouble, but I, yeah, I'm sure she was fine. But it was just so stressful because they wouldn't stop talking. And, you know, when you're trying to teach a class, if you're a teacher and you're watching this, you can totally relate. And if people don't be quiet, it's it's so hard. Those are the worst things, you know, you're teaching in class and people are talking. That means what? They're distracting other people and they're not paying attention to you. So it makes you feel like what you're doing isn't impactful. Like you're, you're putting in all this energy and effort to do a good job, to try to explain things to people. And you feel like, oh, they don't care. You know, it's, it kind of makes you feel bad as, as a person. Uh, and then, and then they're distracting other students. So you know some students are there to learn. You can see it. 
you can see it in their faces. You have students who are sitting in the front, and you can see them visually annoyed with the students in the back. And so you have to respond to that in a polite, professional, caring, calm tone, right? And that's the challenge. You want you can't get angry because they have to respect you, right? So I thought I did really well. I mean, I was never really able to stop it fully. But let me tell you, when I got a real job out of college, my first class, which was one of the lowest level classes, which was supposed to be one of the hardest ones to teach in my, in my whole college, I walked out of class. My first thought was, I'm on vacation. That's how I, that, that was my, my literal first thought. Because my last experience was so freaking hard. I had taught, I don't want to say the worst students, but yeah, the worst students. These are students that came from the worst neighborhoods in the entire, from the ghettos, right? I mean, these, and you know what? These were good students, right? It's just, they didn't know how to be college students. Like they didn't know how to act in a classroom. I, I do think that it was wrong that they had a homework due every day. I don't think that's good. I see why the college did it. They thought, oh, these students need structure because they're coming from, they don't know how to be students. So let's, let's give them structure. But every day, I think it's too much. Every student had uh, an individual counselor too. They all had advisors and counselors. Yeah, it's it like a grant funded program to bring people to a good school. It's really good school. So that was that was a good that changed my life. I, I think I thank my friend for that. I missed that class. Despite it being such a hard class. I, I never I never I never dreaded going to class. It wasn't like I woke up in the morning and I was like, oh, I gotta go teach this class. No, no. It was just, I like teaching math. That's fun. I like mathematics. I like I like helping people. That's, that's what I, I like doing. But yeah, hard things, hard things, my friends. That's just one example. And I want you to give that example because I know a lot of you are maybe thinking about studying mathematics. This is math channel. You know, I post all kinds of content. Uh, it's all about math. It's very math related, but it's it's, it's more than that. It, it's how to deal with people. You know, how to deal with people when they're being difficult. How to deal with situations in life, and it's one of those things that, as a teacher, you don't learn in school. I, I learned a lot of it. You know, when I was in grad school, I I had to take a class. It was a class for. Uh, so it was a teaching class. It was like a how to teach mathematics class. And I remember being so pissed. So I had that class before. I took that class before taking four teaching classes. I was so pissed that I had to take this class. I was like, why do I have to take this stupid class? And I remember the teacher who taught it, he was like the senior lecturer. He didn't have a PhD. He was a master teacher and he taught us tricks. Like he told us to never, he gave us little tips. Like he's like, never give a student a D plus. <laughs> say why well because they'll come back and ask for points you know, little stuff like that or like little tricks on grading like little little things that you don't learn in college like, it's like street math it's like you know like what you, what you really need to know to be a teacher you know little things you know? don't be me be nice be respectful you know? how to handle yourself in a classroom and that class doing those hard things it made me stronger so why did it make me stronger Let's talk about that. Well, you know, as a teacher over the years, I've taught over 12 years, it's a long time, right? 12 years. I've taught thousands of students. I've probably taught over a hundred, I mean, hundreds of classes. I've probably taught over 50 different, I don't know, maybe not 50, differential equipment. I mean, I've taught a lot. And uh, so, you, so you have experiences. You, you have mostly good ones, but you have bad ones. You get, you get people who talk. People who cheat, right? So you have you have all these encounters, all these situations. I've had students confront me, like <laughs> all kinds of stuff, right? And so you learn by by experience. You know? So doing that hard thing, 
you know, having that guy threaten you. It's like one of the highlights of my life. <laughs> he was my favorite student. He was like the class clown. Oh, I love him. I hope he's doing okay today. But yeah. Anyways. Hard things, my friends. Hard things. If you're going through something hard or you're thinking about doing something hard, do it. And that's, this is just one hard thing. I think that it's good to do hard things every day. You know, get to a routine where you do something hard every day. It's going to be hard. Let me slow down here. Because the more you do hard things, the stronger it makes you, right? It really does. It makes you stronger. That, 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 this, was, this was the perfect example of you know, teaching this class. I mean, what an opportunity. I thank my friend for it. Yeah. Hard, it was the hardest class I've ever taught. Hardest one. Hardest class. Everything else is easy after that. Yep. And, I, and I already had teaching experience. Remember, I had taught three different Calculus One recitations prior to this. So I had experience. It's not like I was completely new. I had been in front of a class. I had taught a bunch of calculus stuff. So, on a mathematical note, this class was funny because we taught uh, conic sections. Like ellipses, hyperbolas, circles, parabolas. And uh, when I taught later, pre calculus, the formulas were different in the book. That's all I wanted to say. I know it's really random and specific, but I just I just remembered that. Like, yeah, that was kind of weird. I remember having to go, wait, I have, I have to teach it differently. I, I, I didn't like the way that they were taught the con. I liked the way. A second. Anyways, I've talked a lot. Check out my courses. Make sure the description. Check out my books. I, I, I priced all my books in a very fun way. They're all even multiples of pi. Ebooks are two pi. Paperbacks are four pi. Hard covers are eight pi. Oh, it's so fun. It's so fun. And, the, and links are in the description. Check them all out. But yeah, hard things, my friends. Hard things. Stay strong.